those people that you're so terrified of their opinion of you, those people are not the ones who will live with the regret. Like all these things that you want for your life, mm. but you're too afraid to reach for because of what other people will think. Mm. Those other people are not gonna be there when it sucks and it's hard for you. That's all on you. Wow. Hello and welcome to Mindsbo TV, your online destination for all things mindset, motivation, inspiration, and of course, meditation. I'm your meditation teacher, Rochelle Fox, and today I'm bringing you Mindsbo's take on New York Times bestselling author, Rachel Hollis's self-love tips. If you want to see extended cuts of any of today's videos, you can find them down below in the description box with credits. So without further ado, let's get into it. Everybody is dying inside this fear of failure and the truth is the road to success is not one or the other. The road to success is one failure stacked on top of another, stacked on top of another. And you will never know what it feels like to get to the end of this road if you don't stand back up right now and keep going. You have to stand back up. You have to go again. You have to reach down inside yourself and remember the reason why you started this. My why for me personally is I want to live to be a better version of myself every single day. We need you to believe in the idea that every kind of woman deserves a chance to be who she was meant to be. And she may never realize it if you don't speak that truth into her life. You'll be able to do that if you first practice the idea of being made for more in your own life. If you don't see it, how do you know you can be it? Pursuing your goals for yourself is so important. I want to challenge you to love the pursuit and to openly celebrate who you become along the journey. When your light shines brighter, others won't be harmed by the glare. You, 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 along the lines of what you said, talk about this for a minute. You, in the quote, quote from the book, you and only you are ultimately responsible for who you become and how happy you are. The reason I think that's important for women to hear is, I think oftentimes that's deferred to, well, if my children are doing well, I'm happy. Yes. If my husband's happy, I'm Ooh, happy. Yes. So can you speak to that yes. for a second? Okay. okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go on a small rant for a second. Rant. I have this uh, belief that most women, all the women I know, most of the women I have ever met, were raised from the time they were little that to be a good woman is to be good for other people. So if you're a good mom for your children, if you're a good wife for your husband, if you're a good sister, daughter, friend, then you're good. Mm. And the hard part about that is, number one, your value is fully wrapped up in someone else's perception wow. of you, Wow. right? Wow. Wow. The other thing is, I don't know ever that anyone is deciding that you're a good mom because you're taking care of yourself. No one's ever like, oh, Sarah, mm. Sarah, look at Sarah training for a marathon. She's such a good mom, you know? <laughs> such Nobody a good ever point. says That's that. That's so true. And so there is this idea that you've got to show up for other people or you don't have value. And that's even crazier when you think about like, what about the women who don't want to have children? What about the mm. women who aren't married? What about, so they have no value because wow. they can't, it, it's crazy. That is crazy. It's also when you're a little girl, um, from the time you're little, it tends to be that you get recognition from your parents when other adults recognize you as something. Mm. So they'll be like, oh, your daughter's so cute. Mm. Oh, your daughter's so sweet. She's so funny. So, so you learn, oh, other people's opinions really matter. Boy, and oh this is boy, views oh for like, what are women just drowning in? Like, mm. what is crushing women at other people's opinions? Bingo. They live their life terrified of failure, terrified to try, terrified that they're getting it wrong because their mother-in-law will disapprove or the girls that they went to high school with, are, you know, they're going to see me on Facebook and they're going to watch me. It's crazy. Mm. It's crazy because those people that you're so terrified of their opinion of you, those people are not the ones who will live with the regret. Those people are not the ones who can't afford to take their kids on vacation. Those mm -hmm. people are not the ones who are struggling for Like all these things that you want for your life, mm -hmm. but you're too afraid to reach for because of what other people will think. Mm -hmm. Those other people are not gonna be there when it sucks and it's hard for you. That's all on you. Wow. Wow. So I, wow, I get wow, like wow. so fired up about this topic. Wow, wow, wow. And I also believe like so most most little boys i know not everybody but most little boys are taught this idea of like you have potential 
You're supposed to you're supposed to reach for that yes. potential or try and be a better version of yourself. And frankly, most women are most little girls are taught, you know, to reach for men. Like, hey, get find yourself a husband and then you'll be doing well. Mm. And this I believe in my heart. Like, have you ever seen those movies? Of course you have. Where yeah. like someone like gets bit by a spider yeah. or um, they take a pill or whatever and all of a sudden they have access to all of their mind instead yeah. of just a small percent. I feel like that's what's happening to the to women in the Consciousness world. Consciousness is changing. Like if they just took, like even if the smallest percentage of women, even if just the women who are listening to this, mm -hmm. took one single step mm -hmm. in the direction of who God calls them to be, mm -hmm. I think that the results would be atomic. My gosh. Yeah, so honestly, the whole intention behind this book was I wanted women to pursue a goal for their life, personally or professionally. And in order to do that, you've got to let go of those excuses that hold you back. And one of the biggest excuses is, one, apologizing just like in life. Like someone bumps into you on the street and you're like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, you're sorry for existing? Like, yeah. you're sorry for, yeah. you know? Or you apologize with the way you live your life. Meaning, you want to pursue something, you want to build a business, or, or you want to run a marathon but your family doesn't support it and so you're constantly saying I'm sorry and not chasing down the dream so here we go right oh I'm nervous I feel like I can't no pressure, oh. no pressure. Oh. so for me it was a understanding why that's why I think um, therapy is so freaking powerful it's not that time that you sit in the chair with someone and and cry about all the things it's that moment where you're like Oh my gosh, that's why. If you know why, you can learn how to navigate around something. But I think if you don't know the core of the problem, you can't move past it. So understanding why I felt that way and also making the decision as a people pleaser that I would no longer seek love from others in negative ways. And the only way I know how to do that is I'm gonna be so filled with love myself. I'm gonna be so filled with love for my in-laws, for my parents, for, for everybody else, that it doesn't matter if you love me back. I'm gonna love you so hard, it doesn't matter if you love me back. Because if I've got enough love for both of us, then I don't need to try and shape myself into someone new in order for you to approve of me. Before we get into tip number six, I just wanna mention, if you want more high vibe self-love content in your life, then be sure to check out our Instagram page at Mindspo. We've even created a tribute artwork inspired by today's video, which you can share on your gram. You can find the link below this video. You can't give anyone ownership of what is gonna happen with you. They can certainly walk beside you and cheer you on and maybe work with you, but if you want something, if you have a passion in your heart, fire in your belly, it's gonna be you. It's gonna be you getting up early. It's gonna be you staying up late. It's gonna be you running the miles and, and going to the gym and eating the kale and doing all the crap that you don't, it's only gonna be you because outside motivation is only, can only last for so long. It, you can hire the greatest trainer in the world. Uh, you know, you can um, you can have the greatest cheerleader. I could have you run beside me and yell out inspirational sayings, but ultimately, it's on me. It's like, did you ever see that video? That um, oh gosh, who's the guy that won a billion gold medals for swimming? Michael Phelps. Michael Phelps. You ever seen that video? Like the end of it is like, what happens? You are celebrated in the light for what you do in the dark like what you do before anyone else is awake, what you do when no one is looking, that's what you're celebrated for. And nobody else can force you to do that, that's gonna be on you. Is so many women have a desire in their heart for something more, but they have uh, just a fear of failure. Because now with social media, it's like, not only will I fail, but then the girls who are popular in eighth grade, they're gonna see that I failed too. So they don't even try. They talk them out, themselves out of even trying for anything because they're so scared of getting it wrong. And I'm like, people look at this now, they look at the success of the book or my career, and I'm like, this is a decade of failure mm. stacked on top of each other. And the only difference is I am standing on top of failure instead of buried underneath it. <laughs> so just keep going. Just try again. Just stand back up. It's not how high you fly. It's how high you bounce back. The first thing that I would love for women to understand, especially moms, is that um, you're allowed to have a dream for yourself that doesn't involve these babies. 
And not only that, I think, um, I think that's the point. I think that's the calling. I think that's why you're here. Um, I think that it's possible to be both an incredible mom and an incredible wife, if that's your thing, and to pursue your version of more. Um, I think that if you're, um, there are plenty of women for whom being a stay-at-home mom is the goal, and that's incredible. I think you should just wanna be the best version of a stay-at-home mom you can be. But if you have something else, if you have like the tugging on your heart that like, what if I, what if I, what if I built an app? What if I started a business? What if I went back to school? What if I got out of debt? What if, what if, what if? Like I think that what if, like, that is, that's your potential, like knocking, like it's trying, you can't get it out of your heart because you're not supposed to. You're supposed to pay attention to that mm. thing. So you're allowed to have a dream. You're allowed to chase something, even if it doesn't make sense to anybody else. In fact, maybe especially if it doesn't make sense to anybody else, uh, you are in real time showing these babies what it is to be a grown up, mm. what it is to be a woman, what it is to be like a being with your own hopes and dreams and desires. And not only that, but these kids are gonna grow up. And then what? And then what? When they leave. Yes. And your whole dream was to yes. be a mom. Yes, which is like uh, great. But, but then also, you're gonna do the rest of your life. Yes, like so many women, like the number one thing I hear at book signings um, is women who come up and they say, it's moms, they'll say, I've, I've lost myself. I don't know who I am. I don't know, I don't even know how to find my why. I don't know what my passion is. I don't know. And I'm like, who were you before you were their mom? Who were you before you were his wife? Who were you before you were with your partner? Who were you? What were you into? <clears throat> what did you love? What lit your heart on fire? And a lot of times the things that they loved, they feel stupid about. They're mm -hmm. like, well, of the dance, yeah, the art, and exactly. Music and like singing. I loved choir. I loved, you know, but that like somewhere along the way we got the idea that if we couldn't make money at something, it didn't have any value in our lives. Like, no, dang it! Like that's the point. That's the point of living. Like, what are you doing if the only thing that you have in your day is how you show up for other people? Well, it's no wonder that you've lost who you are. Mm. Um, I'm also super obsessed with the idea, this is a lot of what the next book is about, is um, women from the time most of us are born, most societies that I know of, raise women to, that to be a good woman is to be good for other people. Mm -hmm. So if you can be a good wife to your partner, if you can be a good mom to your kids, if you can be a good daughter, good friend, which means that all of your value is wrapped up in the way that other people perceive you. So. Never, like I never hear people who are like, oh, look at Sarah, like she practices self-care, like, oh, she's such a good she's mom with her self-care. Self -care. Yeah. Or like, oh, look at Jamie, like she's running another marathon. That's like, oh, the definition of a good wife. No, it's all about how you show up for others. Hmm. So then you have, like it's no wonder that women struggle so much with their perception of themselves or other people's perception of them because we've been taught that that's our value. So of course you don't think there's any value in you being part of show choir on weekends because you've been taught that what he wants for you is more valuable than what you want for you. Um, hmm. Yeah, so I, I just, um, man, if you have something on your heart, if there's something that keeps showing up that you think like, this is like, I'd really like to do that, but what if they laugh? I'd really like to do that, but what if I fail? I'd really like to, but I'm gonna have to find childcare. I have like, dang it, sister, like listen to that. Listen to that voice in your head. Listen to that voice in your heart. Like that is the real you begging, begging you to step into who you're called to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Back to the very beginning, and I think we can pull it up right now, your Instagram post that kind of launched this and got it going. It was you there in your swimsuit. 
You know, you said it, stretch marks and all, you're embracing it. Yeah. And this is something that you carried forward through your message. What, what was at the core of this? Uh, well, uh, truthfully, tequila was at the core of that. <laughs> um, I was in Mexico with my husband. I wanted to show off my bikini top. And I took a picture and I started to edit it out so you couldn't see my stretch marks. And I thought, dang, so many moms I know or so many women I know would kill to have stretch marks and are not able to because they're not able to carry a child. This is a blessing. This is a, this is a badge of honor. And so I'm going to rock it with pride. And it really resonated with women all over the world. I love it. Absolutely not. I honestly just wanted to write about the hard seasons that I had gone through in my life because I felt like a lot of these things were universal. Struggling as a new mom or um, how I felt about my body or being in relationship with my husband. All of these things were struggles I had gone through and it wasn't until I started to write them down that I realized the core of what was wrong in those seasons was that I was believing a narrative that just wasn't true. Uh -huh. So I thought if I could write about my own struggles with this that maybe as a woman reading it, you might recognize like, wait a minute, do I do this? Do I self-sabotage? Do I break promises to myself? Am I doing these things? And hopefully if you read my stories, it encourages you to ask some questions of yourself. Thanks so much for watching today's download. I'd love to know in the comments down below, what was your favorite takeaway and your favorite tip from this self-love tribute? Be sure to click the big red subscribe button down below to support our channel and smack that bell so you don't miss our next self-love download. For more self-love tips, you can find Mindspo on Instagram. And until next time, go love yourself and I'll see you soon.